Hello everyone, today we're going to be starting a process with this guy. A uh, very interesting and very rewarding process of uh, growing this Mellow Cactus Bayensis from seed. As you can see it has a bunch of fruit up top and this fruit does come after the flowers. Um, they do tend to come in bunches just like this. It usually has like five or six fruit at least all throughout summer. And well, we're going to pick some of these and hopefully grow some cacti all in front of your eyes within a couple of minutes so the first thing you want to do is we're gonna go ahead and remove these fruit and when they're sticking out like this it's very easy to pull them out they're not gonna uh, be stuck there they're just already pretty ready to be um, harvested so we're gonna go ahead and pull the ones that are all the way sticking out and we're gonna continue to step number two All right, so once we have our fruit, we are ready to harvest some seed. And basically, this is really easy. There's no science to it. I just squeeze the, the fat part of the fruit. And as you can see, the seed all collects at the bottom and comes out real nice. And what I do is I lay these on a napkin or a paper towel like you see here. And just wait for all these um, juices to kind of dry out. And after that, I just spread them on a white piece of paper and they're ready to be planted. It's one of these seed pods or fruits has about 20 to 30 seeds. Depend, it's uh, pretty random. Some come out with more than others. I found that the more sun the plant gets, the more seeds come out um, per fruit, you know, and that only makes sense because obviously the more sun, the more photosynthesis, the more power, or the more energy the plant's gonna have to make some of these fruit and seeds. So as you can see, we have a bunch of seed. Uh, now we can let this dry out. We can throw these away. And once they dry out, we will be ready to plant them. Plant them. So two things I want to mention here, guys, is uh, it's really important to keep everything clean, everything that is not new. For example, these are new, so you don't have to clean them. But I'm going to be using this pot to fill it up with water to uh, moisten the soil that I'm going to use and I washed this right before I used it. I washed my hands, um, pretty much wash any surface that your seedlings are going to come into contact with because once you put them in a Ziploc bag and it becomes a contained environment, it's really easy for fungus and mold and things like that to grow in there and that will kill your cacti. So you want to give them the best chance you can when you close up these plastic bags uh, that there are no spores or things like that and especially containers that you've used for food, and bread, bread has mold and the spores will get into your cactus soil and they will grow and that will be the end of your seedlings. So <clears throat> I want to keep everything clean. I have already microwaved this soil. Uh, you want to microwave the soil for the same reasons I just explained. You don't want any sort of um, contaminants to be inside of that dirt. Uh, that they will grow once you put them into a contained environment and they will kill off your cacti seedlings. So, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, these are the things that we're going to be using today. They are these um, just tiny cubed um, Ziploc containers. Uh, and they're sealable. And then we're going to be placing those inside of a Ziploc bag. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and open these up and we're going to be poking holes uh, in these containers. I'm going to poke holes on the sides, on the top and the bottom. I'm not going to poke holes on the top just because I'm going to try to keep uh, spores from falling in through the top as much as possible. Um, it may not make such a big difference, but like I said, anything you can do to help these seedlings along because once they catch on some mold or some spores, they're pretty much going to die off. That's another reason why you want to keep these contained separately and not all together. If one of these containers were to catch some mold or some spores or something and the seedlings inside of one of these containers dies, well I could just toss that out and I'm going to have 
um, all the other containers separate so that one incident of mold is not going to kill all my cactus seedlings. You know how they say don't put all your eggs in one basket? Well, don't put all your cactus seedlings in one plastic pot where you're going to risk all of them dying to the same cause. So we're going to go ahead and um, this, there's no science to this guys. You just want to open some holes so that there can be some ventilation. Uh, inside of your inside of your containers, you do need your seedlings to breathe, even though they have to be in a sort of closed environment. So we're just gonna open some holes on the top for ventilation, and we're gonna be opening some holes in the bottom. And these holes in the bottom are actually for drainage. Your cacti seedlings need to be moist at all times, but they do not like standing water. Um, so you don't want them to be, you know, sitting. In water for too long because they will rot and you don't want that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that all of my containers and I'll probably speed it up so you guys don't have to sit through it <laughs> So now that we have uh, some of these, at least three of these ready, we're gonna go ahead and fill them with dirt. Like I said, this dirt has been microwaved. When you microwave your weight, your dirt, I'm sorry, be careful when you pull it out of the microwave because it will be extremely hot and you do not wanna touch it. So you're gonna just fill these up with dirt they don't need a lot of dirt, just enough for the root structures. They're very small root structures, so you don't need a lot of dirt in each one of these. So, just enough for some roots to grow in there. And then we're going to go ahead and place them in here. And we're going to fill up this pot with water so that the soil can get nice and moist. You want to do it this way because this ensures that the whole entire um, potting medium or your soil gets completely soaked because like I said you're going to be putting these into a contained environment and you won't touch them or even worry or bother them for about three or maybe four weeks until you see something happening because that will be enough moisture for the cactus to survive um, for a pretty long time or at least a month until it's poked its, its head out of the, of the soil and then you can go ahead and open it and spray or mist it just a little bit these guys don't need a lot of moisture they're not big tropical plants but they do need to stay moist in order to germinate so go ahead and fill that up put it in here and we're gonna do that to all of these Okay, so after you've given these a chance to soak up some water, uh, we can go ahead and grab the Ziploc bags. Uh, like I said, you want to use one Ziploc bag per container to keep these um, as separate as you can. Uh, and I don't like to write on the bags because sometimes I reuse them. Uh, what I do is I just have a plant label each one of these guys and we could just toss that in there the plant label does have the name of the cactus species and the date that I am planting the seeds uh, it's good to keep track of uh, when you plant them just so you know you can track your you know your progress and see how fast they're growing and check your conditions based on your results uh, because you it's really easy to forget when you plant seeds if you plant a lot uh, or even after you plant a couple of these, it's really easy to forget. So, after you've prepared everything, it's a pretty straightforward process. You just want to drop a bunch of these guys in there. You don't want to sew them too thick, too close to each other. Because once they grow, they will need a little bit of space. But they are cacti, so their root systems are not that big. So you don't have to worry about planting like two or three of each seed in each one of these pots you can go maybe like 20 or 30 
and just change that number based on the results you get. Put about 20 or 30 seeds in there. Now depending on the rarity of your plants, guys, you might want to put less uh, seeds in each pot just because like I said if something were to go wrong with your pot you might want to have a bunch of spares um, but since this is one of my own plants and I do have a lot of seeds I don't mind putting about 20 or 30 in this one pot alright so we're gonna close that up remember these have all uh, ventilation holes on the sides oh I almost forgot before you close that up you want to lay a very fine layer of uh, vermiculite this is fine vermiculite and it's just a very fine layer over the top of the seeds just to help them kind of um, have somewhere to grab onto with their seeds you don't want to cover them too much because they don't have a lot of energy um, to poke out of there when they're so small so if you cover them too much they may not make it over that vermiculite so just a fine layer is okay and we're gonna go ahead and Cover this up. Make sure all the corners are sealed. And we're going to throw it in a little Ziploc bag. You want to leave a little bit of in there and just close it up. And hopefully, you'll be able to forget it, not touch it, not open it, and not spray any more water in it for about two or three weeks. And hopefully, you'll be able to see some action on the sides. Um, the more you open these bags, the more chances you create for there to be spores or other contaminants flying into your pot and that's all going to risk the livelihood of your seedlings. So I suggest leaving the bags alone until at least you get some germination and then you can start slowly acclimating them out to a regular environment. You can't just take these out of the bag and expect them to grow in full sun because you will burn them off these cannot be in full sun um, filtered light works best and the less you mess with them the better your chances are going to be all right guys and after about um, three to four weeks if you're able to fight the temptation of opening the ziploc bags or watering them uh, these are more or less the results that you will get as you can see here we have uh, some copiapoa seedlings uh, and these are the Melo some of the Melocactus Bayensi seedlings that we planted in this video earlier on. As you can see, they are just starting to grow in there. And I do have these guys under 100% humidity. They are covered at all times. I only open them about once a week to water them. And after about they get about three or four uh, months old, I do start slowly acclimating them to a regular environment where I start opening the lid little by little and this process does take about um, two to three weeks um, while they acclimate to no humidity and then we could bring them out here as you can see these are a little bit bigger and they are already even starting to show some spines these are some copiapoa cinerea and these are some astrophytum kiko uh, seedlings that i've had these are four and five months old so thank you for watching guys if you have any comments or any tips for me any any of you more experienced growers please leave them down in the comments and if you're enjoying these videos they're helping you with uh, your journey through uh, collecting plants or especially cacti please uh, subscribe to my channel so that you can keep um, updated on what's going on with my plants so see you on the next video guys